numbers on the current edition of your textbook of those things. Um, if you're having an older edition, it might be a different page number. Okay, questions? Okay. So, um, there's more. Uh, I also want you to be able to describe the shape of class, the sphericity, prolate, oblate, spherical, and then roundness, which is a different thing. Angular, rounded, and then determine the sorting. Is something well sorted, poorly sorted? Um, and you will be able, hopefully, by the end of Friday, to put this together into a coherent description of either a sediment or a sedimentary rock. It's a well-sorted, fine-grained, well-rounded port sandstone. And that, that describes, gives, it tells people what the characteristics of that rock are. Any questions? Oh, um, sorting is actually uh, covered in uh, roundness and sorting are covered in chapter one of your book. The mm -hmm. figures are not all that great in the book. So I put really nice ones uh, in this lecture and it is posted on your whiteboard. And uh, yeah, so um, what we're gonna do is um, I'm going to briefly introduce the scale to you, and then we are going to, I'm going to show you, then we're going to take a break and classify some sediment and try and, I know I, I forgot to emphasize a key thing to, to have uh, for this class and structure is a, a hand lens, if you don't already have one, a loop. Uh, and I, I was on the list, but I forgot to uh, emphasize that yesterday. You really need them. You'll need them for, for a field camp uh, also and for general being a geologist. Uh, but, uh, where was I? Oh, um, and so we'll take a quick break and start doing some description of sedimentary rocks. And then I'll show you the procedure for taking a set of grain size measurements and computing mean standard deviation. And hopefully before the end of the hour, they'll have your first lab to you. It's a do on your own lab. And I'll explain it when they bring it to us. The, the Xerox machine broke this morning, so I couldn't print. Okay, this is, uh, it's on page, I wanna say, <laughs> Um, 87 and 88 in your book. I believe the, the actual graph is on page 88. And uh, the, this is the scale on the left here is the scale that we geologists use. And we started talking about this yesterday. Uh, this here is millimeters. And uh, I got no, no clue what that is. Uh, but what we do is, remember, we finished up the lecture on Monday saying that um, phi is equal to minus the logarithm base 2 of the size in millimeters. For millimeters, darn it, millimeters, this is the way I always do it easier for me than logarithm base two. Millimeters are equal to two to the minus p power. And so what does that mean? It means, uh, so what is, if I have something that's zero phi, this is where I always start, what's, what's that in millimeters? One. One. Anything to the zero power is one. I, that's, I, I can always start there and figure things out. So something that's one millimeter is zero phi in size. 
tell me if I'm um, boring you guys to death. You guys already do when you see my movies. Um, what about something that's one feet? Two to the minus one is? What about, here, I'm going to actually redo this up here. Not good. Three millimeters, let's say zero, one, one, zero point five. Okay, what about something that's two feet? A quarter. Yeah, so you guys see, beginning to see the pattern now? What about three feet? So that goes half, a quarter, an eighth. Four feet is? Sixteenth. That's not Point four six two five. Mm -hmm. but anyway, um, four feet is the bottom of sand. If something is 3.8 feet, it's a coarse silt. Hmm. If something is coarser, 4.1 feet, it's a very fine-grained sand. And that brings up the next thing, is we break rocks based on grain size. And we do that because they behave fundamentally differently, as we'll describe, as we'll understand uh, when we get into the physics of flow. So, Things that are coarser than four feet are sands. And this is the great thing about sedimentology. Um, what are we, what's a rock made of sand? A sandstone. sandstone. <laughs> it's all easy. Yes. And so sand is, uh, it goes from four feet to minus one feet. Minus one feet, so what's minus one feet? In grains in millimeters. Two. So things that are finer than two millimeters and coarser than a sixteenth of a millimeter are sands. What do we call things that are coarser than a than sand? And if it's just loose on the dirt, what do you call something that's coarser than sand? Gravel. Gravel. It's the good general term. And uh, gravels can be broken up if I've got something, and I should, you know, you know what, Kyle, let me see. You can always look at the, tell you what, Kyle, can you, um, I'm going to run out of time here. Can you, nah, nah we'll, we'll deal with that on next Monday. Um, the, uh, let's see, where was I? Oh, gravels, if you've got something this big, it's uh, a, something you probably have never heard of. It's called a granule. But if something's that big, a nice rounded fragment that big, it's called a pebble. And if it's that big, it's called a cobble. And if it's that big, it's called boulder. a boulder. And boulder. And those are just different classes of uh, gravels. So boulders, things, and um, basically, uh, granules basically go from two to four millimeters. Pebbles go from four millimeters to um, about 64 millimeters. You know, about that big. Kind of makes sense. And then cobbles go from 64 millimeters to, I believe, uh, was what's the finest size on boulders? I think it's about 25 centimeters or 2.5 millimeters or something like that. Um, anyway, any questions on gravels and sands? Uh, finer than sand is called silt. And silt goes from, we might as well do this now, so gravels. Silt goes from minus four to minus eight feet. 
And what, what's uh, minus 4 is a sixteenth of a millimeter. What's minus 5? P. 137. Minus, oh, excuse me, 5 feet. Sorry, my bad. 8 feet. Yeah, so, um, so what is, if 4 feet is my 1 16th of a millimeter, what's 5 feet? 32nd of a millimeter. What, 6 feet? 64. 64th. What's 7 feet? 128. 1 128. What's? 256. 8 feet is 1 256th of a millimeter, which works out to be about 0 0.064 millimeters, or 64 microns. The engineers use a slightly different size for their break between silt and the finer stuff. They, it's a 50 microns, but it, it's effectively meaningless. And that difference is effectively meaningless. And so stuff that is finer than silt is called? Clay. And it turns out that once you get silt, is mostly made of broken up chunks of rock, quartz, and feldspar. Clay is made of its own minerals. You don't find broken up chunks of quartz that are 10 feet. Hmm. You find different minerals, which are usually the clay minerals very fine flakes of uh, clays. And they behave, because of that, they behave very differently than the silts. So clay, silt, sand, pebbles, quartz. And next week, we'll talk about how you classify different combinations of the silts. Any questions? So that's size. That's the fee scale. And each class of each fee scale divides up each class of grains. So from four to three fee, between four and three fee is very fine grain sand. Between three and two fee is fine grain sand. Between two and one is medium. Medium. Four. Coarse and very coarse. Very coarse. And then silt is the same. It's got coarse silt, medium. Let's see. It's it, it has uh, five, six, seven. So it's got um, coarse, medium, fine, very fine silt, and then clay. So questions? Everybody's got this cold. So how do we uh, determine an average? Um, we use, um, there are equations that you guys will learn uh, that are in your book in, I believe, in chapter one that um, you can use to, from an agglomeration of different sizes, come up with averages. Here is how we show grain size things. One is um, typically to measure grain size, the historic method is to pour stuff through a sieve and you shake the sieves. We have machines in the back that'll actually shake them and bang on the top, they're incredibly noisy. And they'll, they'll knock all the sand grains through and you then weigh what stops on each sieve and that gives you a set of weights that you can use to define a curve. So here's a histogram showing how much weight was each fee size. Um, here's where you've just taken the same thing and smoothed it out. So here's percent of the sample, and here's the sizes. So you can see the mode of this, the thing with the most, is 2p, which would make it a between what two classes, right at the boundary between what two classes of sand? It would be right between medium, medium, medium fine. and coarse. Is that right? No, no, no. Between fine and medium. Very coarse, coarse, medium, fine. Between fine and medium grain sand. And it's just taking that, the weight is still, everything's actually still coming from those weights, but they've just smoothed it out. You can then uh, do cumulative weight, which is just instead of doing it as the material, you can do it as the percent coarser. 
So 30% of the material is coarser than 1 feet. 60%, 65% of the material is coarser than 2 feet. So it's, it's just putting it on a cumulative scale, which is actually what we use. Yes? Yeah. Oh, just checking it out? Yeah, that's good. And um, then we can actually straighten out those curves using something called uh, probability paper. And as you guys know, all, or hopefully know, if, you're, if you've ever done statistics, all of the statistics are based on SAM populations being part of what's called a bell curve, where there is a central mean and then various variation in the sample and errors in measurement give you a spread away from that central mean. And the thing is, you end up with these long, skinny tails out here. And what probability paper does is it squeezes the middle and stretches out the ends so that instead of a curve like this, oops, By stretching out the ends on this, it turns that cumulative curve into a straight line. And so here is a set of is lines that are following points, and they approximate a straight line. Okay, everybody got all. Um, then, okay, and I'm going to yeah, start this with how we do this. Now, in your book, I'm not going to go through this in detail, but sorting is the measure of spread of the data. And skewness is the measure of whether it, even after, sometimes even after you transform it to phi scale, it's not a normal probability. So for example, you might have a whole ton of a very well sorted sand and then a bunch of silt and clay. So that your, your frequency curve would look like this. Actually, other way, that's a whole bunch of, yeah, that's a whole bunch of gravel and silt and clay negative phi on the left. Or it could look like that. And those are skewnesses. Because, remember, negative is the um, negative is the coarser grain stuff, right? Negative 2 is in coarser as gravel. If something is negatively skewed, it has a Holes, big spread. It has a tail of coarse material, meaning it has a boulder or two, a couple of cobbles, a couple of pebbles, big long spread out on the coarse side. If something is positively skewed, it has a real spread on the fine side, fine sand, some silt, some clay. So here is a classic fine skew. So if this is sand, Minus one, and then here, going out here with lots of silt and clay, this would be a positively skewed thing. There are diagrams in your books that show this. Okay. Any questions? Is that making sense to everybody? So the skewness gives which side the tail is on, and the uh, and positive, because positive is, is in phi scale is small, is finely skewed, and negative is coarse skewed. Questions? Um, okay, where were we? Okay, so sorting. Uh, here, 
Uh, notice it's the spread in feet. This is effectively what's a standard deviation from the mean. If you've got boulders and clay, you've got a huge spread in the data, so it will be poorly sorted. If it's all, all everything in there is fine grained sand, it's very well sorted. Okay, so your sorting scheme is, the, this is um, a picture that shows rounding, and uh, you notice that rounding is not spherical, different things. Uh, it, rounding means the, how sharp are the corners on it. So this is angular because it has lots of sharp corners, and this is well-rounded. And the classes are very <coughs> angular, angular, subangular, subrounded, rounded, and well rounded. And typically, we just throw all of this together. It's a well rounded, moderately well sorted, coarse grained sandstone. That just, you just string all those net adjectives together and get it. Any questions? Clyde? Do the distance from the origin. It's, it tells us stuff about it. So, for example, mm -hmm. angular, tell you said distance from origin. What else? Anything else you guys can think of? Is that travel? It gives us distance of transport. You know, it gives us mm -hmm. how long and how far this stuff has been moved. Um, it doesn't have to be in a straight line. It could be right next to where it came from, where it was eroded. Let's say you're on a beach. And so you can have something that moves a long way without getting very far. Mm -hmm. And so you can have well-rounded sands that are spatially close to the source, but they've traveled a long way. So it gives transport distance. Sorting tells you, what does sorting tell you? Any ideas? What, what has to happen? To get, what, can you imagine an environment where it's going to lay down a bed of sand, and every bit of that sand is just the same, almost just the same grain size. Mm -hmm. It's all fine grain. Well, they were, it may be, maybe to the heel. Could be far from the source. Oh, let's make it even harder. Everything's a coarse grain sand. Hmm. Coarse grain sand. Everything's coarse, but it's all the same size. There's a, there's a dry lake in Oregon like that. Yeah, it's something to do with energy of transport. And what has to be, so it's, it's how strong the river current, or the waves are, or the wind, mm -hmm. whatever's transporting that grains and moving them to the site, and what's, what's happening to keep everything the same. What's happening to that current during deposition? Very constant. It's not changing. So if you have a very constant current and that doesn't change, you'll have a well-sorted sand. If on the other hand, so imagine the difference between a flash flood coming out of the Franklins, go whoosh, boom. <laughs> yeah. Big, huge flood stops all of a sudden. You'll have boulders and silt right together, poorly sorted. Versus, say, the Rio Grande, where the river rises and flows a while and then gradually subsides. Much better sorted. So sorting tells you how constant the energy is. It also tells you something about the source, or it can be confused by stuff about the source. If the only material you have in the source is fine grain sand. Let's say I'm in, in Egypt and I'm eroding an old bunch of sand dunes. All I'm going to have available for my stream is fine grain sand because that's all that's in the sand dunes. It also can tell you about the limits of your current. Wind can only deposit certain, you know, can only uh, move certain sizes of material. It can't move cobbles and boulders and things. Mm -hmm. So again, Wind deposits tend to be medium and fine grain sand. And well sorted, because that's all they need. Mm -hmm. Questions? 
Comments, Kyle? Anything I should have been talking about? I do have a question. Uh -huh. um, when the wind does transport, is it usually more angular? I would think that that would be violent on the sand grains compared to water. Good point. Wind, <laughs> wind deposits are rounded much more quickly than over shorter distances than stream deposits because the impacts are so much harder. The water will cushion the grains, you know, because they're, they're light floating through the water. Buoyant, they're more buoyant in the water, so they don't hit each other as hard. Sand grains and the winds whack each other really hard, so they round much more quickly. Okay. Okay, yeah, anyway, here's just a good example of well sorted and well uh, nice well rounded uh, this would be a well rounded well sorted sand we don't have a scale so we don't know what size this would be a uh, probably a well sorted angular sand okay I just have some let's see which brings up the next thing is roundness is not sphericity. I won't spend much time in this. Sphericity is simply the ratio between the longest axis and the shortest axis of a grain. Um, it, it, uh, and you can tell it isn't the same as rounding. So here's more rounded grains, here's more angular grains. Here are flat, this is flat going up to spherical, realize that there are two different um, types of grain shapes. There are prolate grains, which are rod-shaped grains, which are ones that are shaped like that. And there are oblate grains, disc-shaped grains, that are flat And uh, not much, it doesn't mean all that much. Streams tend to create, or sometimes create more of these. Beaches sometimes can create more of these um, because they tend to slide things up and down the beach. Mm -hmm. But it's not a hard and fast rule. This sort of tech, uh, shape is more resulting from the original rock that creates it. And it really only is useful in gravity. Because sands, things are bouncing along and it doesn't really matter. Questions? Uh, yes. What was the first one called again? Oh yeah, I might as well write it. Prolate. Prolate oblate. And what's one which is shaped like a sphere? <laughs> Spherical. <laughs> All right, um, roundness, okay. So we've been through everything. Uh, and here are just some pretty pictures. Uh, I'm just gonna flip through them now. So here gives a size, here's 200 microns, that's 0.2 millimeters. What's the grain size of this? 0.35. Well, don't, don't give it micron. Is it medium grain, coarse grain, fine hmm. grain? What's what's the grain? What first? What's two hundred microns in pea size? Not accurately, but it's between two and three feet. So the medium micro, two hundred and fifty microns is which, or or quarter of a millimeter? Microns, by the way, are a thousandth of a millimeter. So two hundred and fifty microns equal 0 0.25 millimeters. Okay. So two hundred microns is little less than a quarter of a millimeter, so about two feet. So um, what what's the size of this in, is it a very fine grain? Well, first let's do, if this is, say that fine to very is two fine. feet, what's the size of these grains here? Well, right probably there. medium to coarse. Huh? Medium to coarse. In feet between, one. is it between two and one? Between two and three? Between one and zero? One and zero. 
What's the average size? It's right there between where my fingers are, a little coarser than that, is two feet. Medium. Okay, how many people say between three and two? How many people say between two and one? Okay, you guys are right. Yeah, so this, okay, it's between two feet and one feet. What's the brain size? Um, 0. 0.5. 0. Well, in, in terms of coarse, medium, fine. Medium. No, medium. So it'd be a medium grain of sand. And um, the trick with this, your eyes tend to be drawn to the biggest grains. Mm -hmm. Try and see, the reason I did this, is try and, and look at sort of a set of grains. Look at the average that you see a lot of. Um, this is how you will identify them in the field. It takes a certain amount of time to do this. Uh, today and tomorrow, Kyle and I will put up some calibrated samples for you. I'm hoping your grain size cards show up uh, today or tomorrow, and okay. then you'll have cards to calibrate them. And I'm hoping the grain size cards are a better batch than the last grain size. Anyway, uh, here's just pretty pictures of grain. What's the difference between uh, angular and rounded? That and here. Angular, angular and rounded. This is all angular. This is rounded and angular. Huh. It's a mixture of, if you have, what if you have some very rounded grains and some angular grains? What does that tell you about the, the pain theory? It could be well sorted. That's fairly well sorted. Good idea though. Um. Movement all happened at the same time? Contaminated sample. <laughs> it's happened. Or, or two different sources of your sediment. Some yeah. that's far, so your, your sand is coming from, s eroded from some places that are a long way away and some places that are more close. Yes? Uh, does mixed mineralogy come into that? Like if it can. Some minerals that stand up to erosion longer? There are. Uh, you, uh, the harder grains, uh, quartz and quartz tends to hold up the best. It's actually, and we're not going to talk about that much in this course, um, especially in tropical climates, the, it's more the chemical level. And so if you're in a tropical climate, uh, for, uh, the, the amphiboles, the biotites, the feldspars tend to weather away, and you get a very quartzo sand because of the chemical level, not so much the physical. Uh, in arid environments, you tend to preserve the uh, uh, Mineral, the uh, more so unstable the mineral is more better. Yeah. So the humidity plays into it. Not so much. Hum it's the it's the actually the soil moisture okay. more than anything else, and the biota in the soil that produce acids that dissolve rocks. Hmm. Is how you know how active your soil is. But over long distance of transport, pretty much everything but the quartz gets beaten up and, and taken away, and so. But an abundance of unstable grains, especially things like micas, imply that you're very close to the source. Hmm. Okay, I'm going. Ooh, perfect timing. I'm going to go see if they successfully. I, I left them uh, hopefully printing your labs, and I'm going to uh, see if they've got them printed.